So is there any, I guess, from what you've seen thus far, any high level maybe landmines you can say, hey, maybe try not to avoid or step on these, but just any pieces of advice from, from what you've seen thus far, maybe telling yourself you know, six months to a year ago, knowing what you know now? Maybe a couple, I would say three things. One, lockup schedules are important uh, in crypto. And it's funny, we, we might in some ways go back to having uh, where, where everything unlocks ICO style because then you get an open free price right then, you know, might go down, might go up. I mean, Solana unlocked all together and it actually went up because it, you know, it became more decentralized. So that's one, I would say incentivization um, and, and tracking that very closely. If it has really high inflation and they're offering high APYs that might run out and that might be the reason that the TVL is going up very quickly and sort of uh, being wise to that, I think is sort of another you know, important metric. Uh, it, you know, there's a bun bunch of different forms of that, but yeah, I'll, I'll mention those ones. Thomas, maybe for the audience that doesn't know about the low float, high FTV, like what you're talking about, I, I agree, I think that's a really interesting point, but could you unpack that a little bit about where we are right now um, and why, it will, why the, the unlocking schedule is so important? Yeah, so um, you could imagine, right, uh, you know, having an IPO and uh, they only float 1% uh, of the, the stock or something like that. Um, and, and it's, you know, a lot of people want to own this stock and, and um, uh, there, there's a lot of assets and not much potential freely floated out there. Uh, that might cause it to go up and, and sort of the early invent venture investors, uh, uh, they might you know, hold a lot of the, the sort of private tokens that unlock over time on a vesting schedule. It might be a three-year vesting schedule. And so, uh, you know, that 1% float might suddenly go to 50% float in a year or something. And can the market absorb, you know, kind of a very high market cap um, sort of uh, being sort of a lot of tokens being dumped on the market in, in the course of a year or two years. Um, and, and a firm maybe that needs to sort of show DPI to their investors, right? And so they might love the project, but sort of feel obligated to sell it. And I cr think that creates some um, sort of dynamics where you don't really know if these uh, public token prices are, are super real or inflated by the fact that they have a low float. And, and this is obviously one of the other metrics that all the fundamental um, investors I follow are, are, are tracking. They're tracking the token unlock schedules and trying to understand the implications for another 5% of the float being absorbed by the market. Exactly, and that's why I was saying it, we might go back to a time where you actually sort of float a huge percentage all at once, and so you just you don't have this sort of uh, sort of uh, psychological overhang uh, to the market that, oh, there's going to be these unlock schedules. Can the market absorb it? But rather, okay, w this, is, w this is when all the tokens unlock. They all unlock together. Who's going to hold it from the VC class? Who's going to buy it from sort of the public investors who are looking at the opportunity on that basis? <laughs>